Hi, I'm John, your concierge to the world of the Raspberry Pi Pico, IoT, robotics and fun tech. Today I'm going to deviate a little from my normal subject and take a look at the Raspberry Pi 5. I use Raspberry Pis as servers in my environment and for high level robotics functions like planning and mapping. Of course, I was therefore delighted to see the release of the Raspberry Pi 5. In this video, I'm going to take a look at the hardware and two peripherals, active cooling and Pi Moroni's MVME base to allow me to run from an SSD. I'll also do some measurements of the performance uplift from my Raspberry Pi 4 workhorses. Please remember to like the video and subscribe. I do appreciate it. I've been using Raspberry Pi for quite some time and I run quite a few of them in my environment. Some of them run as servers uh, on my network, providing messaging hubs or web servers or managing the network itself. Ones like this one here, where I've actually put it on a 3D printed rack and it's powered using power over ethernet and it just slides into a rack below my um, network switch. I also, of course, run Raspberry Pis for robotics. And you've seen some of these. Remember you've seen DDD, uh, my DIY dev droid, and that used a, a Raspberry Pi 4 for uh, navigation and high level control purposes. So did Robot Santa. That used a Raspberry Pi 4 in order to do face tracking. And I had hexapods as well that I've used with Raspberry Pi 4s. Or well, actually 5353s even, I think. For some build environments, I also build Pico code on the Raspberry Pi. And the reason I do that is it gives me an environment that is definitely scratch. I can rip it down, build it back up again. I know what, what libraries I've got in place, etc. It's a clean environment that I use for some troubleshooting and testing some things out. So a more powerful Raspberry Pi, the Raspberry Pi 5, is definitely exciting and really helpful because I want my compilation to run faster. I want my robots to have cleverer brains. And, you know, perhaps I might want some more power on my network servers. Though, to be honest, the Pi 4s are probably quite good enough for now. I could not produce these videos without sponsors. Today's video is sponsored by Cancun, my favourite UK retailer for components. I love the ever-changing special offers of core components. Cancun has kindly offered a discount of 20% on the first order for you, excluding tools and test equipment. Just quote Dr. John EA at checkout to get a 20% discount. So go check out Cancun today. The Raspberry Pi 5 comes in the same form factor as usual, and so it feels very familiar. We've got the normal GPIO pins, the four USBs, and an RJ45 for Ethernet. We still have USB-C for power, two mini HDMI ports that are 4K capable, and power over Ethernet option available, though the power over Ethernet board isn't out yet for the Raspberry Pi 5. A few things have changed though. We now have two cameras or display ports. This has shrunk them down to a slightly smaller size though. This has made room for a PCIe interface. I'll use that later to mount an NVMe SSD drive. A battery connector for a real-time clock, which is great because I've had to add my own RTCs to Raspberry Pi 4s. There's also a dedicated UART using the same connector as the RPI debug probe and a fan controller for cooling the fan. And I'll use that with the active cooling module in a bit. And I nearly forgot to mention my favorite feature. There's now a power switch so pushing the button, we can tell the Power 5 to power down or hibernate, which is great. Like previous Raspberry Pis, you can call the Raspberry Pi 5 just using air cool. If it's not in a case, it should be able to operate with medium workloads happily just sitting there. I did notice when I was playing around with mine that it is actually getting quite warm. Not as warm as the Raspberry Pi 4 did when we first had those launched. I was getting something like 75 degrees off of the CPU when I stressed it a little bit. So I've bought an active Raspberry Pi cooling board to add to this. 
these aren't really that much more expensive than a traditional heatsink, so quite happy to pay that. And they were really easy to fit as well. I was quite surprised that this was actually a push fit rather than actually screwing to the board. But it ha uh, sticks nicely and I was amazed by the temperature drop. Running this with roughly the same workloads, I was getting under 50 degrees with that cooling fan in place. So well worth having. I run very few of my Raspberry Pis on micro SD cards. Perhaps just for boot and setup, those that operate all the time are nearly always on an SSD. Now for a Raspberry Pi 4, those have had to be connected via USB, which is a little bit on the clunky side. But for the Pi 5, I can put an NVMe via the PCIe bus, and that's what I did. So I've bought a Pi Moroni NVMe base unit with the SSD kit. So this comes with a base PCB, standoff screws, ribbon cable and feet. I won't show you how to install it. To be honest, Pi Moroni have got a much better uh, video on YouTube than I could do. So I'll put a link to that in the description. It looks really good connected up, nice and clean and you know, nice and contained as well within the same footprint. And you really notice the difference in performance right away. The drive is nice and responsive. But let's see if we can quantify that responsiveness. I've used Sysbench to do some CPU and memory analysis between a Raspberry Pi 4 and a Raspberry Pi 5. Then DD utility to look at file system write performance. CPU wise, we have about an 86% increase in performance from a Raspberry Pi 4. That's nearly double. And the memory performance increases about the same, 83% from a Raspberry Pi 4. For me, this is also my first Pi with more than two gig of RAM. So that's great too. In terms of write performance for the disks, well, my Raspberry Pi 4's obviously got a USB SSD or drive on it. So it's writing at quite a reasonable speed of 138 megabytes per second. The Raspberry Pi 5 using an SD card actually only manages 22 megabytes per second. Now that could be because I'm using a rubbish SD card, I must admit. But I'm gonna use SSD and we've seen me install that, the NVMe SSD drive on that gives me a performance of 231 megabits per second. So that's a good 60% or so increase up on that. Read speeds are a little bit more surprising. A Raspberry Pi with USB reads at 237 megabytes per second, which again is pretty reasonable. But the Raspberry Pi 5 in both micro SD and SSD seems to manage to read at one gigabyte per second, which is pretty impressive. Um, I think there might be some caching or something going on here because those numbers look really just a little bit too good. Regardless of whether there's caching or not, the results are still pretty good. The performance of these drives is excellent and that makes the Raspberry Pi 5 really useful workhorse. The Raspberry Pi 5 has some great performance and is a really welcome uplift from the Raspberry Pi 4 I use most of the time. I'm amazed that all of those extra connectors actually fitted on the board. No wonder they had to drop the headphone jack. The setup of both the active cooling from Raspberry Pi themselves and the NVMe base from Pi Moroni have been an absolute doddle to install. I still have some work to do though in working out how I'm going to do headless installs in this model. That's what I normally do. Of course, hardware is only half the story. We still need software and software that will work flawlessly with my Pico development environment. I'll take a look at that in a future video. Thank you very much for watching. Please like the video as it helps others find it and please subscribe and hit that notification button so you don't miss the next video. Goodbye for now.